And this little panel here, this shelf is here to uh, allow the, the mail route carrier to put the mail. Oh, so they forgot to deliver this, Pink Flamingos, a great little film. Somebody's probably waiting for their, their Mr. Eggman. But anyway, the mailman did not deliver properly there. Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl in Burdenston Auto Wrecking in Burdenston, Mass, which is kind of in the sticks out in the woods. And in fact, if you live in a rural area, the U.S. Post Office probably delivers your mail in a Grumman carrier vehicle, a little cube-like van. Well, Ford made them too. We can see that name Ford right there. This is called a G100, not an E100 or F100. This is the G series. He's only made for a few years, 1970 through 73 or so. This is a 71, but again, we have to remember that the, some of the first postal vehicles were the Jeep DJ dispatchers from 55 well into the 70s. And of course, in 1963 and four, Studebaker got in the act with a thing called the Zip Van, two years only. Well, a decade later, 1970, Ford says, we want a piece of that sweet government contract action and came up with the G Van. Again, Ford right there, pressed into the bottom of the windshield. These are all right-hand drive. Clearly, these were born for uh, rural mail carrier deliveries. Now, these are kind of weird. They're semi forward control. You drive from up front, but they do have a snout on them, whereas the Studebaker Zip Van was more of a flush nose. Of course, the Jeep DJ Dispatcher was actually a, a CJ, lightweight, with a full nose. So the Ford uh, G Series was a little bit longer, but it had its own special charms. Very austere and under the hood, there it is. This is the venerable Ford 600 or 200 cubic inch six popper. And uh, this is, of course, part of the 144, 170, 200 family. Uh, the 240, 250 would have a separate intake, but when you see the intake manifold cast and chuggle with the head, you're talking 200, 170, or 144. This is the 200 Cuba right here. We can see here, of course, it is right-hand drive. The brake master cylinder is on the right-hand side of the vehicle or the left facing it. So the driver's leg, etc., were right above the pedal. The gas, uh, the carburetor on this thing, as you can see here, this cable, the uh, gas pedal is a cable operated device which pushes and pulls here, which simplifies uh, the arrangement of the pedal on the right-hand side versus the left versus a, a rod and a bell crank and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's take a peek inside. <clears throat> and the door still works. Check this out. You can see the, the blue and the white U.S. Post Office livery. Uh, the big mirrors right here. We can see them here and also up on the A-pillar up there. We can see that uh, spherical mirror right there, that 3D mirror, so to speak. That was there to, of course, help the driver navigate and back up and drive in neighborhoods without running any toes over or worse. We open up this door here. I'll go inside and let's explore. All right, yeah, here's the right-hand drive right here, literally. And again, the Ford generic pickup truck steering wheel. Here's the Ford logo in the middle of the hub. Honk, honk, honk. Automatic transmission, here it is right here, probably a C4 automatic, first, second drive, neutral, reverse, park. The generic speedometer out of the bus, the uh, I believe the B-series buses had the similar speedometer uh, unit. And it's funny here, the heater is so analog, a little duct, this plastic duct brings hot air up and you can either duct it down or up on your leg, depending on what you do with this little door right here. Kind of an interesting little feature. Dome light switch right here. Of course, you're sorting the mail in this thing, and you've got to be able to see what you're doing. And this little panel here, this shelf, is here to uh, allow the, the mail route carrier to put the mail. Oh, so they forgot to deliver this. Pink Flamingos, a great little film. Somebody's probably waiting for their, their Mr. Eggman. But anyway, the mailman did not deliver properly there. Now, this is a government vehicle, and there's all kinds of nomenclature right here on the back side of the visor. Safety check before operating vehicle. Theoretically, every time you get in this thing, visual, check all tires. Check for body and fender damage. Check under vehicle for oil, grease, or water leaks. Check oil gauge, gas gauge, ammeter, air brake pressure, etc. Check rear view mirror, reference, etc. Manual checks, this means you have to hands on. Check windshield wiper and horn. Check steering for excessive play. Check service and emergency brakes. Check all lights, including signals. Check accident report kit and fast 
fasten seatbelt for safety, check your driving habits, report any deficiencies to your supervisor before operating this vehicle, and let that be known. This does have a trim tag right down here. We can see it's manufactured by Ford Motor Company, and uh, it has the uh, 102 net horsepower, which of course means the uh, 200 cubic inch six banger. But again, this is an E1, or sorry, a G100, not an E, Econoline or F series pickup truck. Let's go around to the side and explore further. And uh, it's funny, you gotta imagine how many thousands of cycles people walked out this door bringing the mail, maybe a draft notice, to your mailbox back in 1970. All right, let's go around the front. And I brought my handy dandy floor jack here to examine and explore the suspension on this thing. Now, you might assume this would have maybe Ford's twin eye beam front suspension, but that would be kind of heavy. These things were designed to be as light as possible so they could carry the most cargo as they possibly could. So these have a tube steel front axle that's suspended not on leaf springs, but on coil springs. In fact, if you look behind the tire right here, there's the coil right there. That's the main suspension. It does have, um, semi-trailing arms right behind it, those forgings right there, kind of like a twin IB item, but it's not. This is actually a, uh, a tube front axle, a live axle. It's not the split axle like on a pickup truck. Uh, the venting, of course, here to allow cooling on a hot summer day, tire pressure 22. Again, one of those things you'd have to check before you hit the road in your G series van. But the big thing about these really is the junkyard treasure hunt. Now this being a Ford has a Ford nine inch rear axle. This is a two door or two wheel drive vehicle. So it doesn't have four wheel drive. So in order to get the mail to you during rain, snow, sleet strikes, uh, this has a pause attraction in the rear or traction lock as Ford would call it. That right there is the nine inch rear axle. I don't have x-ray vision, but there's a very good chance that these are a 350 or a 389 to one ratio inside of that with traction control or you know, pause attraction, I should say. So this differential right there, it's probably worth 500 bucks, just saying. It's been sitting here hiding in plain sight. But we can see this is a body on frame vehicle. We can see the frame rail right there and the body is sort of bolted down to it. So it's light, but not as light as it might be. Notice the canted shock absorber arrangement right there to help tame axle hop and axle dive on acceleration and braking. Not that this thing's gonna be spinning the tires with that 206 banger under the hood. Now we go around to the back and here's the iron rear bumper, of course, heavy duty for getting in and out. Uh, and the things you find in the backs of vans, for instance, on this one, there's a couple of Chevy 60 degree V6s, that thing right there, that is a uh, Chevrolet 229, I believe, V6 right there. And that's a Buick, never mind. It's a distributor up front. So that's a Buick 229 or 231, whatever. Uh, not even, no, that's, never mind. That's a 2.8. There we go. It's a, 60, it's a 90, 60 degree. It's a little guy. It's junk. But anyway, also in here, we see just cool stuff like this. These were in the back. These, if you know your Z16 Chevelles from 1965, these are the N96 styled mag wheels, which are absolutely not mag wheels. It's basically a simple stamping with a lot of stuff added to make it look like a real mag wheel. But here's the thing. Somebody didn't get the memo and they probably put an air wrench on that and zip, they're off it came. But these would have been seen on Z16 Chevelles as well as full-size Chevrolets well into the 1967, 68 model year. And in fact, if you owned a 68 GT500, you had a very similar wheel cover on that or a Jeep, a Jeep Super Wagoneer also had wheel covers like this. These were made by a company called Garland Industries for Detroit automakers, Chevy, Ford, and yeah, Jeep used hubcaps like these, but these are the N96 Chevy versions of them in pretty good shape. You never know what you're gonna find inside of a van. Now, something else that's kind of cool <clears throat> about this is the way that the vents work on the back. This one's got carthritis. We'll go to the other side and have a peek at that. So maybe Shane, if you can either go around or cut or do whatever you gotta do, but these little vents, here we go. Now on a hot summer day, you know, 90, 100 degree day, you wanna get some air. So this little vent can open up like that or like that or both. Kind of a cool little design right there. So the Ford designers who came up with the, uh, the G series van did a good work of baking in interesting little details that brought the functionality and the comfort level of this thing as high as possible to the postal workers who'd be driving these things so they wouldn't go as postal, or go postal as quickly as they might have otherwise, just kidding. But again, this is the story of the Ford G100 
mail delivery van. Uh, nowadays, of course, Grumman has the contract. We see those interesting little things. would have Chevrolet drivetrains, by the way, little four bangers in them. But Ford was playing a game right here, 70, 71 and two, as far as I can tell, these things were made. So not a lot of these things were produced. Uh, and of course, the uh, Studebaker Zip van, only two years, 63 and 64. And then of course, the more common Jeep DJ Dispatcher, 55, well into the 1970s, early 80s with those things. But if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel and ring the bell so that you're made aware of new videos as they come out every single day. And remember too, we have about three or 400 videos in the playlist, which you can binge on right now. You'll find something you like, just sniff away, they're free. In the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow for Junkyard Crawl.